in a facility like this one, whether it's a church or an auditorium, the place of honor is typically where you have the best view of what's going on there. And typically, that's going to be the front seats. Last night, we had a couple of people that moved to the front seats <laughs> before I had a chance to tell them not to sit there. <laughs> for weddings, those front seats are typically reserved for the bride and groom's close family members and friends, as well as the wedding party. And for funerals, it's similar. Close friends and family members, they're the ones that sit there. Jesus tells us in today's gospel reading that we should not select a place of honor for ourselves, but rather we should go to the lowest place. Now for years, I always sat in the back of the church. It's not because I was humble. It's because I was afraid I'd make a mistake and sit when I should kneel or kneel when I should stand. And I didn't want anyone to see me mess up. And it's common, for Catholics anyway, to generally prefer the back pews to the front ones. We can see that today. Now, if I wasn't a priest today, I'd be, I'd be sitting more in the front than in the back, but that's only because my eyes aren't as good as they once were, and sitting toward the front helps to correct that. But I'd still be afraid of doing the wrong thing, so I'd still avoid the actual first pews. I think it's rather ironic that the guy who was afraid to make a mistake at mass is now presiding at mass in full view of everyone. By the way, I am not attacking anyone who likes to sit in the front. And in fact, if you're good with it, so am I. But today Jesus tells us two parables. The first is addressed to the guests of the Pharisee who, had, um, who was hosting the dinner that Jesus was attending. In this parable, as I mentioned, Jesus advises the guests to avoid sitting in places of honor and instead seek out the lowest place that they can find. And for context, he's talking about a wedding feast or a banquet. When he uses that kind of image, the wedding feast, you need to know that what he's really talking about is the kingdom of heaven. And we see Jesus using this image all the time in the Gospels, so it's not unique to this particular passage in Luke. Anyway, Jesus is using this parable to tell us how we should act in the kingdom of God, which he has come to build. And with it, he's saying that we need to adopt an attitude or a spirit of humility now by seeking the lowest place here so that when the banquet of the kingdom comes later on, we will find exalted places there for ourselves. In this parable, he's telling us that he finds fault with the arrogant attitude of those who think they are more important than they really are. Now we hear echoes of this in our first reading. The first lines from, from this reading from Sirach say this, my child, Conduct your affairs with humility, and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. It can also be restated this way. You should be humble, and you will find favor with God. Now, the virtue of humility is quite simple. Humility wants to acknowledge God as the source of all good things, and to avoid any excess pride or ambition precisely because it respects who God is. In other words, God is God and I am not. So then Jesus next shifts to another parable and this time he addresses it to the host of the dinner that he's attending. And he tells the host that he should not invite family or friends or rich neighbors. Now I ask you a question rhetorically, how many of us are not going to invite family and friends to Christmas dinner? I mean, really what's wrong with inviting your family? Well, remember that Jesus is still talking about a wedding banquet. And as I just mentioned, that's his way of referring to the kingdom of heaven. And notice that Jesus gives a warning about invitations. 
do not invite family or relatives or rich uh, neighbors, lest they also invite you in turn and repay you. He's telling us that we don't wanna do things where we have a reasonable assurance that we'll get a return for our gestures or our actions. In other words, Jesus is saying there is really no generosity in giving to those who can repay us. Now it's true. Many, if not all of us, live our lives precisely on getting a return, whether it's investments or 401ks or that sort of thing. We also get paid for the work we do when it's our job. And we even select our friends with an eye toward reciprocity. We tend to ask ourselves all the time, will this be worth my time and effort? It's only natural and we do it all the time. So what are we supposed to do? Well, let's go back to what Jesus says. When you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. Remember, our first parable was about humility and recognizing our place relative to God. Jesus in this second parable is shifting from humility to charity and in particular to almsgiving. Just a few weeks ago, we looked at Jesus's teaching on almsgiving when we talked about building up treasure in heaven. We don't give just to feel good about ourselves, but to build up treasure in heaven where it can't be rotted or stolen or lost. And he's talking about food here today too, food for the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind, for those who can't feed themselves and for those who once they've been fed have no way of repaying you. And this is the way of charity, which is loving God above all things and our neighbors as ourself. The good things we receive are ultimately given to us by God And so Jesus is telling us that we must use those things as gifts to others who have been less fortunate or blessed than we have. In this way, we build up the kingdom of God in which in the age to come, the good and the righteous will be raised up and exalted at the wedding feast of heaven. And so today we have two takeaways, humility, humility and charity. Humility can be summed up with this simple phrase, God is God and I am not. And charity is this, to love God above all things and to love my neighbor as myself. Remembering those two things will help us to build up treasure in heaven. And God will tell us when the time comes, as he does in the first parable, my friend, come up to a higher position.